You're listening to the Woman of Value podcast. You are about to hear the story of a woman who is following her dreams and passions and creating positive change in the world. 11 moves 27 years later, you know, I have really reinvented myself right now, you know, at almost turning 50. I've decided that, you know, I'm planting both feet in the ground firmly. I have two kids that are already out of the nest and one almost ready to fly the nest. So it's my time. That's really how I look at it. My guest today is Amy Schmidt. She is passionate about empowering women who are in the middle of life and beyond. She's the founder of Fearlessly Facing 50, and she's on a mission to inspire women to not look back, but to live their second act with gusto and grace. Welcome to the show, Amy. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be on here. Thank you so much. I love your mission. And I would love to know, because I know you recently started this business after doing other things in your life. And we'll get to your backstory in a minute. But I always like to start with what does a woman of value mean to you? Oh my gosh, that that is such a great question. Because when you think about a woman of value, it has to be a woman that you also, first of all, you have to value yourself. And I think that's most important. Um, but a woman of value is just a woman that adds confidence, adds competence. You know, there's the old saying that says, we rise by lifting others. And I love that because that's what I really feel a woman of value is, someone that listens, someone that encourages, someone that links arms along your journey with you. And that's, that's how I feel about that. Mm, beautiful. Yeah, I think that um, a lot of people, when they don't feel like they're enough, have trouble thinking that they matter enough to even be of influence and to inspire somebody else along their journey. Exactly. Exactly. I think there's so truth to that. And there's so much truth to that with women, um, especially at this age, you know, when you turn 40, 50 and beyond. I think that's, that's something that women struggle with. So Amy, take us into that aha moment when you stepped into your value. Oh, that's such a great question. And you know, we, we as women are multidimensional. So, you know, you kind of start and your trajectory is one way and then you navigate and take different courses. So my journey started, I met my husband in college. We each set out to, you know, pursue our own professional careers and uh, we got married. I started in broadcast journalism and always have loved to write. That's always been my passion. And started with news broadcasting and reporting and ended up marrying my husband, who was on a journey of you know, his goals as well. So we kind of had to compromise and figure out how we were going to make this work. So we ended up moving every two to three years, which as a woman trying to reinvent herself all of these times becomes a challenge. So it was kind of, I reached a point where I said, okay, I've been in now, I was doing news reporting, I was doing broadcasting, I ended up going in corporate America and worked for a pharmaceutical company and kind of their communications and marketing departments. And then I got pregnant with my first child. So we had then already moved two times, and then nine more times. So it brings us to the present 11 moves 27 years later, you know, I have really reinvented myself right now, you know, at almost turning 50. I've decided that, you know, I'm planting both feet in the ground firmly. I have two kids that are already out of the nest and one almost ready to fly the nest. So it's my time. That's really how I look at it. That's cool. So you developed incredible resilience and yes, the ability to transition. <laughs> yes. And yeah, being flexible and yes. transition. It was almost like when you move that many times, I know I've said it and I write about it all the time. It's almost like you get a kit, you move somewhere, you have to put on this, you know, you have to be confident and you have to be resilient and you have to have that face for your children as well for them to watch you and say, Hey mom can do this. And you kind of, you have to just, you, you have to own it. You have to own it. I remember many times driving around with my kids in tow, trying to figure out where other families lived in the neighborhood because, you know, you had to reinvent yourself. You had to become that person. Yeah. So you, you learned a lot of great skills along the way, even though it I may not have so. been the life of choice when you I signed think so. on for this. Yes. Yes, exactly. So I'm curious how it affected your children. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And you know, you always revisit that. I think as a mom and as a woman, you're constantly thinking about that. You think, oh my gosh, what did I do? You know, we've moved so many times. But one of the most exciting moves we did was we lived abroad. We lived in Germany for six years. And really during that time is when my kids were kindergarten, fourth and seventh grade. So, I mean, it was at a time in their life that my seventh grader really didn't want to move. I mean, she really didn't want to. My fourth grader didn't want to leave his friends and my kindergartner just looked at it as a big vacation. <laughs> so, you know, it was one of those things that I feel my kids and myself have just, like you said, become more flexible, you know, open to change. And I think those are all life lessons that, uh, that they are going to, you know, have in their life journey. And I know out of the three of them, I know one is going to end up living abroad. I just know it because it's, it's imprinted so much on their heart. So. Oh. Yeah, but I think, you know, I think the kids did well. And it's all what you what you show them too. I mean, you really need to show them the way. And certainly you have good days and not so good days. And they see that, but they learn to react to it. And um, it's how you react to it as the mom, as the wife, as the one in kind of large and in charge at that point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. I I grew up moving a lot and oh, okay. I think I counted about twelve moves up until today. Wow. And that's through my life. So my parents moved twice in each city that we lived in. We didn't live abroad, but we moved uh, always to try to be closer to my father's and mother's families in New York. Right. But I started out in Atlanta. Then I moved to Long Branch, New Jersey, then Baltimore. And then I was back and forth all over the place. And so I always like to look at how my siblings responded to the change as opposed to how I did. And I think for some, for some children, change is exciting. Change means opportunity, change right. means new people, and I get, to, I get to be somebody new. And it also depends on how old you are. So I, yeah. I, I moved once in going into seventh grade, and that was tough. And when you mentioned your daughter, it was a tough into, one. It's a tough one because you yeah. Of self identity and who am I, and I want to be accepted, and yes, are these people, and will they like me? And so, it, but I do know that for me, all those moves help me to be much more resilient and to deal yes. with really tough things in my life. And I'm not afraid of moving. And I think yeah. a lot of people at this stage in life are petrified to make change. So, I I'm curious so about what you're finding as you enter into this new career as a fearlessly facing 50. Is this one of the big fears that you see? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, and, and you bring that up about people not wanting to change and not wanting to move. And I had a conversation not that long ago. I'm doing an upcoming podcast with a group of expats, and they talk about how some of them actually said, you know, they put off the move for two or three years because they really didn't want to do that. They were scared. And I think on this journey with me, especially with Fearlessly Facing 50, with my podcast and the book and everything, I had to put the fear of, you know, am I going to fail at this? I, I, I'm so used to change, but you know, you also kind of look at it and you think, can I do this? Am I smart enough to do this? I've been out of the workforce for so long. Can I really tackle this? The, you know, the logistics around technology, you know, that's all a fear. So with change certainly comes fear. That is for sure. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the other fears. Cause I know, you know, getting to this stage in life, a lot of people shut down about a lot of things. Oh yeah, sure. What are the other big fears that you see? You know, conversations that I have with women, and it is all about conversations because we all share this, this common thread. A lot of people are fearing about health, you know, their own health, their personal health, or health of their family. Um, a lot of fears that I'm seeing on this journey, especially at this age, are fearing of aging parents. All of a sudden, the roles are shifting, and all of a sudden, you're now caring for your parents as they age, and that shift is very difficult, and maybe you're not in the same state as the rest of your siblings. Um, there's a lot of, of fear around that. I see a lot of fear, as you probably do as well, around career change or getting back into the career after being you know, off for maybe not a gap year, like we tell our kids, you know, take a gap year, maybe a decade or two. And, you know, the women struggle with, is it time for me to put my resume out there? And their finger kind of hovers over that send button. And they think, oh, you know, they second guess themselves. I think we're finding a lot of fear of second guessing ourselves. Do we really, can we really add value in this role, even though we haven't been in the professional workforce for, you know, say 20 years? 
And um, so I think that's a big fear I'm seeing as well, uh, fear, seeing as well with this journey. I'm also seeing um, some fears around relationships with adult kids. Um, that's and relationships with your spouse or your partner, you know, all of that takes on a completely different role. As you know, at midlife, everything changes, not only physically, but emotionally. There's so many things that people are, you know, they, they get nervous about. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen all of those things and more yes. and, uh, and dealt with them myself. And so yeah. I have a few questions for you. One is um, for yourself. You yeah. know, you had some fears about failure what um, what other fears did you have when you started this this whole big shift in your life? Oh my gosh, that is that's a great question. I'll tell you two big fears I had. One was around technology, to be honest, because you feel outdated. You know, I got a new iPhone. I was currently I was recently on a talk show, and we were talking about fear, you know, 50 and beyond. And, and I actually said, you know, I got a new iPhone because everybody was up for an upgrade. So it was time for me to get an upgrade. It was time for mom to get an upgrade, got the telephone and I couldn't figure out how to turn the flashlight off because on this new one, there's no home button and the flashlight would go on at the most unexpected times, you know, all of a sudden it's flashing and flashing in someone's face. So technology was a challenge. And for me, that was a fear that I had and I needed to, you know, I needed to push that aside. I needed to figure it out. And I think it's important to be a lifetime learner. That's one thing I always talk about, you know? So it's important for me to tackle that fear and what triggers it was learning more. You know, how do I figure out how to navigate editing and producing a podcast like you do every day? You know, it takes a lot. Um, how do I figure out this website and, you know, do this? But it, it, it's so inspiring, I think, for people to Put those fears aside. It's been inspiring for me because now I actually have conversations with my kids and with my husband. And sometimes I feel like I know more, which is kind of cool yeah. because, you know, two months ago, three months ago, I wouldn't have had that same conversation or had that comfort. Um, another real big fear I had is about writing. And I can sit in a room and write for hours. You know, I mean, I just can close everything off and write. But I was so afraid of people kind of saying, oh, that's not right. You know, is it grammatically correct? Is it perfect? Is it all of those things? And I'm sure you see that too. And so a fear of me, for me was, you know, finishing this book that I have started and stopped so many times. And it's simply because of fear. You know, you can come up with all these other ideas. Oh, maybe I should clean the house today instead of sitting and writing the chapter I'm supposed to be writing. Maybe I should go to Costco and, you know, buy that huge bag of chips that I don't need <laughs> and putting off it's procrastination and perfection were my fears, procrastinating and then wanting it to be perfect. But, you know, we all know we, we can't do that. We can't do that. It's, it's interesting that of every woman I've interviewed for this podcast, <laughs> they all have the same fears. And yeah. I think when you step into a bigger space for yourself. Right. And you are driven and you know that something bigger is ahead. Yeah. The, uh, the fear, the fears all start coming in. And, and I think that perfectionist fear in the imposter syndrome and all the things that, that yeah. people who are very driven feel, right. it's because they're not playing small. It's yeah. because you're not hiding. You're, you're exposing yourself. And with exposure yeah. comes judgment. Yeah. From yourself first, for sure. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And it's in service to something bigger. So right. when you do hit published and you do hit send and you do publish the, the blog post, the writing, the, right. the, the book, the podcast, what is your bigger why? My why is because, you know, I'm so passionate about empowering and encouraging women. It really is, that's, that's really my why. I want to open the dialogue about conversations that we need to be having, you know, real conversations, real people. I love to hear about celebrities and what they're doing at 50 and 60, and it's wonderful, but it's not relatable. So my why is really bringing it to real people, real conversations about topics that really matter. And, and they are, you know, they're multidimensional just like we are. There are so many things that we need to talk about. And we all share this common thread. We really do as women. I think it's important. And that's why I'm so passionate about, about linking arms on this and sharing stories of inspiring women. Because my goal really is, if it can leave an imprint on a heart, 
of someone that's listening or following me or reading what I write, or it inspires them to take action or a combination of both. I feel like I've done my job. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. So what is your biggest pain when you see somebody who's in midlife? Like what would be the thing that makes you the saddest? Oh, I think this whole thing about women losing their identity. And I think that so many women struggle with that. And then with that, they feel like they've just, they're invisible. And, you know, there's just so many things we can do. It doesn't need to be going back and doing something grandiose in the workforce. Maybe that's not, you know, in, in your cadence right now, but it's finding something where you can add value. And that's why I love your podcast, because that's what it's about. And every woman has value. And sometimes we just put it on the back burner and we take care of everybody else and we do everything we need to do and we keep all the plates in the air, but we just need to figure out where we can feel good about ourselves and feel confident because there is so much, so many stories we have to share. Everybody have, you know, I always say, and I know it, it, it sounds funny, but every ordinary person has an extraordinary story and it's talking about that. So I think, I think that's my, it's my take. Yeah. It's, it's, I like that you say it doesn't have to be grandiose because I think that's the fear. That's one of yes. the fears. It's, right. um, if I do it, it has to be so big and I'm afraid right. of it being so big and how am I going to handle that? Yes. And it's like, there are micro steps, first of all, to achieve exactly. anything you want, you know, whether you want to write, whether you want to go volunteer once a exactly. week and do something that feels like it's yes. making a difference. And we also don't realize how much of an impact we have on other right. people. Somebody needs to hear that story. Somebody yeah. needs to hear what you went through to empower them to get to that next step. Right. And so that's, that's what I love about stories. I think that seeing somebody who has recreated themselves, who has stepped into their value, who has found their why is yeah. inspiring to the next person who might be just need that little push. Exactly. And we can't wait for it to be perfect. No. And you know, that goes back to perfectionism. We can't wait for everything to be lined up or the perfect timing, because we all know that's never going to happen. No. And, but that's hard. That's hard to face. And uh, it, it is, but um, I agree. There's just so much that we can do as women to encourage each other, whether it's volunteering or, or anything and mm -hmm. just doing one or two things a day. You know, I mean, just if you're writing a book, write three sentences. If you can write three sentences, it's great. So, you know, your own goal that you can achieve. And I think that's important. Yeah. So you don't set goals that are unachievable. Exactly. <laughs> uh, exactly. A lot of people create these massive goals that are not achievable. I remember my son years ago wanted to lose weight. And sure. so he said, I will, I will never eat sugar again. I will <laughs> run 10 miles a day. I mean, it was just like, you yeah. know, there was yeah. no way that that was going to be sustainable. Right. And now he's at a great weight. He's doing really well because he, he really found a way that worked for him. Yeah. And that's, that's what's, that's, what's important. It was all for him. It was about mindfulness. It was about being mindful right. of what he puts in his mouth of the being, uh, having a consistent exercise routine, um, not, not doing something over the top that's massive, but doing something every day Yeah, that, that's doable. So I, I, think it's really important for our listeners to hear that this isn't about some pie in the sky goal exactly. it has to be attainable it has to also light you up and make you excited to to do it right right so amy what are you creating in the world right now i think what i'm creating in the world is an open dialogue opening this conversation among women that um, whether it's a story of sharing a story, I have a podcast coming up about a woman who is in her 50s and raising her son who had a stroke at 18 and um, he has locked in syndrome. So sharing a story like that, I see myself, you know, creating just stories that leave imprints on people's hearts. That's what I want to do. I really do. I want to empower and encourage women and just to step outside their comfort zone and allow themselves to put fear aside. And I think that would be, that'd be a great accomplishment. I love it. And you're writing a book. So tell I us am. about the book. Yes, I am. And it's going to be published in 2020. So the year I turned 50, it's my yeah. birthday gift to myself, I say. <laughs> um, and it's all around this vision of cannonball 
And when you think of cannonball back in our day, you know, you'd jump off the high dive and you'd cannonball and you'd make a big splash. So if you can envision a woman in her 30s standing on a lower diving board and kind of, you know, making her way, just kind of tiptoeing out to the edge and jumping in, but having a lifeguard there to kind of get that life preserver because she still doesn't have that confidence. And then you picture someone in their 50s that is standing on the high board. They don't need any lifeguard. They don't need anybody to catch them. They're going to jump in with both feet and they're going to take on the world and they're going to leave a huge splash. They're going to cannonball. So my book is all about that going forward at midlife and beyond with confidence. And you know what? Kind of have that attitude. of It doesn't matter. Are people going to judge? Absolutely. You know, we're always going to, but you have to be confident with what you're doing and believe and have passion about what you're doing. And that's what the book will be. It'd be my story kind of uh, woven in with uh, other women that share their inspiring stories with me. So I'm excited about it. I love, I love the, 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 the idea of a cannibal. The, vision, the visual, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know the cannibal. I drove into a, a wine store locally the other day and here in a box was a box with a logo of cannonball and I said, boy, it's everywhere. So I'm excited <laughs> to, I'm excited to get it out there. I really am. Yeah. Once you have, there's a, there's a word for that. Like once you have a vision for something and you start seeing it everywhere. Yes. Exactly. I don't exactly. know what it's called, but yeah. <laughs> I don't either, but I know exactly what you're saying. And that's so true. When I wanted to buy a red car, all of a sudden, all you see were red cars. <laughs> yes. All yeah. you see. Right. And it's yeah. also like when you focus on, on a new career, Yes. there are signs everywhere that yes. lead to their little breadcrumbs. And it's like, oh, yeah. there's a sign. There's a sign. But you, exactly. your brain is now focused on the signs. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so the vision for the future is get that book published, celebrate yes. the 50th. And yes. what else are you seeing for yourself and for other women for the future? Yeah, well, I'm going to do some public speaking, which I'm real excited about. And um, that's always been something I always tell friends of mine. They always say, oh, I'm afraid to public speak. And some are, you know, more introverted or shy. And so I'm excited to that to do that and navigate some roundtables with women. So having a summit of such uh, with different women that have expertise in different areas, maybe it's dating after 50, or maybe it's hint, hint, or maybe <laughs> it's, uh, maybe it's uh, you know, talking about life changes with, you know, with menopause, which I just had somebody on that was a fantastic woman who started a company now, a skincare company for women over 40. I mean, amazing. You know, have experts talk about different things, aging parents, um, all of those things. So facilitating roundtables and discussions and for women to leave with some more knowledge and insight about how to navigate this phase of life. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We need more conversations and we need to make it the norm for people right. to feel comfortable. Right. And I find, right. you know, that growing up, there was a lot of shame around certain conversations. And yes. Yes. we also have a lot of limiting beliefs about aging. And oh, I love, yeah. Jane Fonda has a great TED Talk on aging. Yes. You, yes. I have listened. Yes. Yeah. And I just, I love what she says. And I think that for me at 63, I feel so much more first of all, that I've stepped into my value, but also permission to um, not care about what other people think as much. I think that's right. been the biggest shift. Is just, Isn't that a shift? I know. It's so amazing. It's yeah. wonderful. And follow your bliss. Don't let yes. yourself be manipulated by people who say that your dream doesn't fit into their life. Well, yes. too bad. <laughs> You're exactly. not fitting into my life anymore. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so we're entering the lightning round, and I'm going to ask you a few questions okay. before we come to a close. So I'd like you to fill in the blank. I used to think I wasn't blank enough. I wasn't smart enough. Hmm. I will say that. I thought about that long and hard, and I've challenged myself around that because I am smart enough. You know, I, it, but it's something that, as I was out of my career, and being a trailing spouse for years and still doing writing and freelance work and things like that, I started to see the shift and thought, uh oh, do I need to go back to school? Do I have need more education? Do I need to go back and get an MBA? Am I smart enough to compete with, you know, the younger generation? So that was something when I when I saw that question, it, it really challenged me. And I hesitated with that answer because I thought, smart enough, Amy, you know, I'm smart, I'm articulate a college degree, you know, I have, it's not 
book smart, but now I realize that I am smart enough. It's your perspective. Yeah. It's your, you know, it's your experience that you've had. But that was something, that was a good question. I'm glad you asked me that. Yeah, it's, there's so much self-doubt that comes up when, yeah. again, when you're playing a bigger game. And being smart enough, is, I, I can relate to that so much. Because, can you? Oh, gosh, I was oh, a little yeah. nervous to say that. No, it's, I think so many women are going to be able to relate to that. Because yeah. I, I just did a speech for Toastmasters for a contest. And I was talking about limiting beliefs and when they got formed. And my not smart enough got formed in first grade. Really? I was pulled out of class without an explanation. And I was told by my mother that I had to repeat kindergarten after starting first grade. Oh. Nobody told me why. And I, of course, assumed that there was something wrong with me that I wasn't smart enough. And mm. I only found out much later that it was some special program. They were pushing me ahead in trying to see if I could handle. I was too young for first grade. I, I don't even know. Still right. too Nobody yeah. really knows, but, <laughs> but also how important it is to explain to our children why we do what we do, Yes, because yeah. otherwise they make up stuff. And so I carried that with me and for decades, four yeah. decades, five decades, I'm not smart enough. And I purposely underperformed so that I couldn't find out if I tried really hard and then found out I wasn't smart enough or talented enough or good enough. And so if I, if I operate under the radar... Yeah. Nobody will know. <laughs> <laughs> so I think so, so many people can relate to, I think so. I, I'm not smart enough and I need another degree. And I, I'll start that, that business after I go yes. back to school for six more certifications and yes. I know people like that, you know, exactly. and it's exactly such a trap. Yes. It's such a trap. It is. It is. Good. Well, thank you for saying that because I was a little nervous to answer with that. I really thought about it long and hard, but yeah, good. I'm glad you found it relatable. I hope others yeah, do too. I think they will. What was the number one thing that was holding you back from becoming a woman of value? Oh, fear. Fear of perfectionism. It was. It was fear. It really was when I look at it. And, um, you know, I was, on the, I was on the Mel Robbins show as a guest, and uh, we talked about that. And she really challenged me around that. But that was holding me back. It was fear. It was fear of, am I good enough? are people really going to read this? You know, what do I think I am? Some, you know, CEO or something that I can do this business plan and I can make this all work. So it was fear. It was yeah. legitimate fear, but you have to realize what triggers that fear and come up with strategies to push that fear aside and propel yourself forward. Yeah, it's really true. And I think yeah. that it becomes an obstacle from, for so many people to just get started. And you mentioned yes. even yep. the technology piece. And I just got my first iPhone 11 <laughs> oh, <did laughs> with you? the flashlight. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and so I always had an Android. So getting right. into a whole new system. But since I started this career, I had to learn how to do the back end of my website. And I actually went to classes at the Apple store when I yeah. bought my first Mac. And okay. I said, I am going to learn how to navigate this technology because I yeah. don't want to feel like, oh, so you're this age and you can't do it. And exactly. I know more than my kids, by the way. Um, <laughs> I definitely know more than my kids. Right. Starting a podcast, all those things are not things that you naturally know. Right. You do make mistakes. Yes. That's how you learn. And that's, that's how you learn. what people don't realize is you, like, you can't edit something you didn't write. You can't exactly. improve something you didn't create. So right. you create it, you make a mess. Okay, now what? Now what? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so speaking of mistakes and messes, <laughs> tell oh, us boy. about a mistake <laughs> that you made that taught yeah. you a very important life lesson. Definitely. Um, another great question. They really make you think. I love these questions. <laughs> Excellent job with these. Um, using the resources available to you. I think that's something that I needed to learn. I needed to figure it out. There's so many resources out there. Starting the podcast, for example, have somebody or sit down at the genius bar. Like you said, you know, that that's one of the things I really needed to do. And, and I regret doing that earlier, you know, earlier along in this journey, because there's so many resources available and they're there to help you. And you can't take it on all yourself. And I think we as women want to tackle everything by ourselves and say, you know, we can do it and we can do most things. 
Yes. But there are times that you need to reach out and utilize your resources. So that would be that would be my answer. Yeah, that's great. So support is so important. And I want to yes. underline that because so many women and men think they can't. And so they just don't. Right. And so instead of saying I can't, I want to encourage all of our listeners to say, who can I ask? Who can do this better than I can? And who can I learn from? Yeah. You know, whether it's a coach or somebody who's technologically right. gifted or whatever it is, yes, it will save you time, it will save you anguish, and it will get you going, yes. <laughs> keep you from getting stuck. Exactly. And what was funny about that for resources for me, especially around technology, was I had a very nice millennial say, you know, my kids are millennials. He said, <laughs> Amy, I can, I can do the website for you. That's no problem. And I said, well, that's great. And I, I, I will pay you to do the website, but I want to do it with you. Mm -hmm. I want to do it alongside you. You know, it's so quick for, you know, it's so easy for one of our kids or somebody just to take the phone out of our hand and say, oh, mom, you just do this. And, you know, they do three clicks and hand it back to you and you don't understand. So the hands-on lifetime learning part of it for me is, is very important. Yeah, I like that you wanted to learn beside them. I think that's, that's crucial and it speaks to yeah. who you are. Yeah. My son last night, who works for the Apple Store, <laughs> um, I wanted him to show me, A, how to put on a screen protector, because a oh. lot of people are afraid of that, and they go yes. into the Apple Store and pay $50 to get one put on when it costs like $7 for five of them when you order from Amazon. Yeah, yeah. And um, so he taught me how to do it, and then he also taught me how to eject my SIM card because I'm going to be traveling to another country. So oh. I didn't know how to do it on this phone, and I don't want to get... Right. To another country and then find out I, I don't know how to how to access it and what do I do and oh my god and yeah yeah, yeah so exactly it's, yeah Good there's fear you. but there's also knowledge of power now exactly so true so Amy two more questions and okay. then we're gonna wrap so tell us the best advice that you have for a woman who wants to step into her value and be more empowered I would tell them, and you said it a couple of minutes ago, just start, just start. Because the timing is never gonna be right, it's never gonna be perfect. And we have to set that aside, that perfectionism part of every woman, to set it aside and just start. Put one foot in front of another and make it happen. And I think that's the best advice. I love that. Yeah, yeah it's thank you. just getting started. You know, getting it's, started. It's such an important first step. Yes. Yes. Because it's easy to go to Costco and get those chips, I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, it is. Or clean your oven. Or clean your oven. Clean or anything. your refrigerator. That seems to be my go-to's when I need to write a chapter in my book. So. Mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm the words with friends girl. I will oh, go. there you go. I'll be sucked into that game. and Everyone has something. Other, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And finally, Amy, how would you like to be remembered? Oh, I, another great question. I love this question. And I really, I have to tell you, I thought about these a lot. Um, how I would like to be remembered is a person, as a mom and a wife that love fiercely, for sure, first and foremost, and as a woman of value that listened, listened more than she speaks, actually. I think listening is such a key. Um, I would like to be remembered as a loyal friend, a lifetime learner, and determined always to empower the people around her. That's really, that's really how I'd like to be remembered. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show, for sharing oh, what, what you stepped into at this stage yeah. in life so that, and sharing your stories so you can inspire other stories. Thank you so much. It was wonderful. If you would like to step more fully into your value, grab a free copy of The Ultimate Guide to Becoming a Woman of Value on my website, thewomanofvalue.com. Just click the link at the top of the homepage. And if you haven't already done so, be sure to click the subscribe button in your listening app. And if there's something in this episode that inspired you, please share it with others. Because the more we share these inspirational stories, the more women of value we will have in this world. I'll see you next time.